I'm Mahan, and I am the nanotechnology guy. Well, at least in TKF Toronto. If you have any questions or you ever want to start a project in nanotech, you come straight to me. And right now, right now, I'm very disappointed. Very disappointed in society as a whole. We have all of these mind-blowing innovations, things like quantum computers, self-driving cars, foldable iPhones, but we still haven't been able to solve the most basic and important issue with human health. Of course, I'm talking about cancer. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the world, and it still doesn't have a cure. Now, there's always going to be that one guy who said, but we do, we do have a cure. And technically, he's not wrong. But chemotherapy is less of a cure and more of an ineffective treatment. I say this for two reasons. Firstly, chemotherapy drugs often have a hard time reaching the targeted cells in the body. And even if they do, this not can evolve or a number of other things to actually cause them not to be killed. And number two, chemotherapy actually targets healthy cells as well. So I'm sure you guys know that chemotherapy causes hair loss. But if we dive a little bit deeper into the why, it's because cancer is defined as any rapidly growing group of cells. And our hair cells are the most rapidly growing cells in the human body. So the chemotherapy drug mistakes the healthy hair cells for cancer cells and kills them as well. This may not be a big of a problem when it comes to hair cells, but it can lead to some really, really serious effects down the road. So to solve all this, we need something that can target and kill a very, very specific type of cell. And this is actually how the field of targeted drug delivery emerged. Targeted drug delivery is a group of technologies that control the delivery and the release of a drug to very, very specific parts of the body, in our case, for a tumor. This can actually be carried out by using our DNA in something called DNA nanotechnology. DNA nanotechnology is when deoxyribonucleic acid is fabricated into different nanostructures in which the chemotherapy drug is then either placed inside or infused with it. So for my project, I, I designed, modeled, and simulated the self-assembly of a 3D DNA nanotechnology tube. My project was actually inspired by what you see in front of you right here, which is actually not only simulated, but built, the DNA nanotechnology was built by a group of scientists in Denmark. One key thing I want to point out here is the locking slash targeting mechanism. So right now, when the lid is closed, the DNA strands on the lid are binded to the DNA strands on the face and making it locked. However, once the... Once the DNA cube comes into contact to a very, very specific pathogen that's found on the targeted cell, the DNA strands on the side face actually bind to that pathogen instead, allowing the lid to swing open, releasing the drug, and killing the cell. So I started out in a program called CAD Nano, in which I modeled the first face of my DNA nanotechnology tube. As you can see, the blue strands, this is the scaffold strand. That's basically what gives it the shape of the cube, while the tiny colorful strands those are the staple strands, and that's actually what gets converted into double helixes once we render it into the, into the, into, into the program. So one side is the five prime, one side is the three prime. So as you can see below, I have four of the faces that are connected horizontally to make up all four side faces of the cube. You can sort of think of the modeling like building a net in math class, where you have to build all the faces and then connect them to one another. So I connect them simply by using the staple strands from one face to another. Once that was done, I added the bottom face, which I had to connect each of, the edge, each of the edges of the bottom face to the bottom edge of the side faces. And now for the top face, I wanted to give it that open lid sort of effect. So I only decided to connect one of the edges to the side face. Once that was all done, I rendered it in a program called Oxview, which as you can see, actually converted the CAD Nano staples into, into real DNA. So one thing I forgot to mention is that I I, I sequenced the DNA using the M13 MP18 DNA, which is a simple double-stranded DNA found in the M13 bacteriophage, which is actually the most commonly used in, all, in assembling these DNA nanostructures. So once all of that is done, we need to cluster the DNA so that the a program knows what to group together and what to move around and order when it comes to self-assembly. So I went ahead and did that on the right and colored in individual so you can see the different clusters. Now, once that is all done, now comes the self-assembly. Self-assembly is when a bunch of parts come together into an ordered structure without any external help. In the case of DNA, the self-assembly is solely, is solely like driven by the different attractions and repulsions between the DNA molecules, as well as the connections. This is why clustering is so important, so that the program knows what can be clustered together and what to group together. In our case, we want each face to be grouped together and what to move around until it gets formed into the structure. So once that is all done, we end with this. And this is the final product of my 3D DNA nanotechnology tube. Now this is the key that opened the doors for, the, for thousands of treatments for cancer and other therapies. For far too long, we've been going about treating cancer all wrong. 
We've been trying to use external chemotherapy drugs when really the power is in the cancer cell itself. We're going to be using the power of cancer against it. And when we do, the cancer cells will be all like snake from the half-blood print. Thank you.